Hey guys, this is John, and welcome to another episode of Chess Cognition. This is a game I played in 2010 against Grandmaster Nick DeFermian, who was playing black here. Note that we're seeing it from DeFermian's perspective. And we pick up the game on the 60th move. I played rook d3. And my question to you is, how can black win this position? I'll tell you that it is a win for DeFermian. And if you'd like to pause your video and try to figure out why, you can do so now. Okay, so many rook endings are won via technical means. You may end up trying to grind out a small advantage and then apply some technique and slowly win the game. But in this example, black actually wins by creating a mating attack. And the correct move, therefore, is g4, caging in the white king. And we'll see why this is so strong in a bit. But instead of g4, black could have went wrong by playing a2. And this is a good example of why you should not always push past pawns, and also why general pieces of chess advice are sometimes wrong, and you can't just blindly apply every general piece of advice you've heard. If black had played a2, I can take on g5, trade a pair of pawns, and then play rook a3. Note that once the pawn hits a2, black is threatening to move this rook away somewhere and then promote, so white must counter that, and rook a3 is the way to do it. And after rook takes a3, rook takes a3, we have a drawn position. Black can never move this rook away for fear of losing the pawn. Uh, sometimes positions of this type are winning if you can favorably move the rook away at some point, but this is not a position where the win can be achieved. So I was hoping for this during the game, but Nick DeFermian being the great player and grandmaster he is, uh, he found that g4 move. So coming back to this position, g4. Now white doesn't have much to do except wait. My king is now restricted. I can't really do too much with this. Um, I ended up playing rook dc3 in the game. Let's look at a couple other lines. I could have tried to push the f pawn, so say f3, but this wins for black after a2. Rook a3, once again, white must get on the file to prevent promotion. Rook takes a3, rook takes a3. Now, compared to the other scenario where black was pushing the pawn immediately, here black could take on f3. And the effect of this capture is that white's king is going to get disturbed. So if king takes f3 now, black has rook f1 check. And once the king moves, black can promote and win. White will have to sacrifice their rook for the queen and they'll be losing. If after g takes f3, white plays rook takes f3, that's also simple for black. They can just move the rook away and the pawn will promote. And finally, if king f2, you might want to ask yourself, if you don't already know, what should black do? How can black win in the event of king f2? Okay, the answer is a common technique, and it is rook h1. Giving up the pawn on a2, so rook takes a2, but then skewering the white king to the rook, rook h2 check. So pushing f3 doesn't help once black has played g4. F4 is probably the best try. The idea of F4 compared to F3 is that you're saying to black, if you want to capture the pawn, you have to do it right away. So if G takes F3, here white can play rook takes F3, and maybe after A2, rook A3, rook takes A3, rook takes A3, hope to gain a draw like this. However, after F4, there is a nice winning method for black, and uh, it could start with a move like rook C6. So transferring the rook to a more aggressive position. Note that here, if white takes the pawn on a3, they lose to rook c2 check. And the two black rooks do in the white king. White's going to get checkmated after rook d2. Rook takes d2. So on rook c6, I looked at a line. Uh, rook d2, trying to guard the second rank. Rook c1. And then let's say rook b6. a2. Rook takes f6 check. King g7, now white's rook must go back to assist in uh, defending against the advance of this pawn. And here black wins by checking the white king and getting the other rook out. So all with tempo. Now the king will move and black can promote the pawn. And yes, black's king is also exposed. After rook d7 check king f8, it's a close call. 
but white is not mating because note the a8 square is covered by black's own queen. If rook a8 check, queen takes a8. So that's an illustration of how black would win even in the event of a more active defense like f4. So in the game, I did play that rook dc3 move. Here Defermian played king g6. This move is not necessary, but it is a nice move. It just protects that pawn on f6, which was previously undefended by the king. And we've already established that white doesn't have much to do. So again, I played rook d3, just waiting. And here Defermian played a2, forcing rook a3. And now the very nice rook c6, intending to play rook c1 and set up checkmate threats against my king. And this pawn still does a great job of stopping the king from coming out. So after this, I played rook d2, looking to take the pawn on a2. But on rook c1, I resigned. I'm a little bit too late. Um, note that the threat is, is checkmate in three. So if I were to play like rook a takes a2, there's rook g1 check, king h2, rook h1 check, king g2, rook a to g1 checkmate. This is really a picture of coordination for black, and the g-pawn is the star, preventing the white king from escaping to either of those squares. So if instead of rook takes a2, had I played f4, black wins in a similar way to one I previously described, rook g1 check, king h2, rook h1 check, king over, and now the freeing move with tempo, check again, and the pawn promotes, black wins. So nice work by Defermian to appreciate the strength of g4, shutting in my king and launching a mating attack. I must say it's kind of unusual to have an ending of this type with one extra pawn, uh, specifically a rook pawn, when you have double rooks. It'd be much more normal to have a single rook ending, and that would have given me better chances. The presence of these double rooks is what really does me in, because as you saw, eventually these rooks coordinated in a nice fashion and set up a mating net. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll be back soon with another episode of Chess Cognition. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.